So, okay, this is going to be a nice class because I don't need to teach anything. I can just relax here and listen. So we are going to have two presentations. First, Wang Shi Wang is going to talk about something very interesting. You will see, learning trading signals. Okay, he's going to give a different perspective from the things we have seen in this course. Uh, in this course, we've been learning about portfolio optimization, right? So, so this is about, this is a bit different. You would see it in a way it's orthogonal to portfolio optimization, All right? But anyway, I don't wanna say anything because he's gonna, he's gonna explain things to you. So Shi Wen, are you ready? You can unmute yourself. Okay. Hello, okay, everybody. Go ahead. Uh, today, I just wanted to introduce some basic stuff about learning trading signals. Then, in this part, there are two things the data and the models. Then, I will focus on the data because I assume that both of you, among, almost all of you, have learned something about a neural network, deep learning, SD, and random forest, those machine learning models. So I will not pay attention to that. I just want to introduce some data. So uh, you can see these menus that uh, I divided it into three parts, the technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and sentiment analysis. Uh, those three categories are most popular that people use this for trading. When you go to the financial markets, uh, you will find that people love these things even though they may not apply it on machine learning models. Still, it's very useful. So I want to, I want to introduce how to trade, trade based on it. And if you want to apply machine learning models, how can you get the data and apply, apply the data on the models? So the first things, the technical analysis that you may heard of this, uh, things like moving average and the related strength index, and those terms that you may have heard of. These are very useful in financial markets. Uh, if, if you go to financial market that you'll find people use it in different perspectives. But now I just want to focus on one perspective. How can you use it for the trading? The first thing is that uh, is NACD, the moving average convergence divergence. This is one in technical indicator that we can look at these plots. The first thing, uh, this is the stock prices. The stock prices, uh, maybe it's Apple and it's 2018, the stock prices. Uh, use these stock prices alone that we can calculate the technical indicators NACD. That you may, uh, you, you have to know that every technical indicator is from the stock prices. So if you have the stock prices, you can calculate almost all the, and all the technical indicators. It's different from another, another uh, analysis like sentiment and fundamental analysis. Those other analysis requires more information, but in technical analysis, you only need stock prices. The high prices, the low prices, the open prices, closed prices, and the volume. So this is the first part. In this indicator, the NACD indicators, we have three elements. NACD lines, those gray lines is NACD lines. And the signal lines, we'll introduce it later, and the histogram. Let's say the NACD line is calculated by two the difference between two elements, the 12 days exponentially moving average and the 26 days exponentially moving average. So this is the definition of NACD lines. And what is signal lines? Signal lines is just the nine days uh, exponentially moving average of the NACD lines. So it's from the NACD lines. And what about NACD histogram? Histogram is the difference between these two lines. but uh, you just know this definition. Uh, but people can uh, create some trading strategy from these indicators. 
So I want to introduce three uh, trading strategies. The first trading strategy is crossover. The crossover that states that uh, the buying signals occur when the NACD line is above the, trade, the signal lines. Basically, it means that it's, uh, your stock price, your stocks is in a strong upper trend. That's the meaning. So, uh, which means that the NACD histogram is positive. So, if the histogram is positive, then you buy these stocks. Otherwise, you sell it. So, uh, we can have a look at this. So, when the histogram is positive, then you buy these stocks. Otherwise, you sell it. So, you can uh, trade, trade your stocks based on this strategy. Then this is the performance. This is the performance. I want to say that no strat trading strategy is success. Uh, is is successful all the time. Sometimes it fails. Sometimes it succeeds. But basically, all the trading strategy is useful. It's useful at some periods, or you can use it for analysis. The second strategy is histogram reversal. This strategy states, uh, suggests that buying the asset when the NACD historical goes up and sell it when it goes down. So this is, this is not like uh, the stock prices. When, when the, the yesterday's stock prices is going up, then you buy it. And the yesterday's stock price is going down, then you sell it. It's, it's different. You focus on the historical. We focus on this program. But if you want to ask me which strategy is better, I may say that uh, no strategy is, is good, but some are useful. This is like machine learning models. Sometimes you can use it, sometimes it doesn't work. So look at this. In this data, uh, it works. Maybe you can say it works. Uh, the sharp ratio is higher, uh, still the analyzed return is higher. So what about next strategy? Uh, if the NACD crossed, uh, crosses the zero line be from below, a new uptrend will emerge, while NACD crossing from above, a signal that a new downtrend may be starting. So these, these things are, these things are very, I don't know, this signal is very slow. It, it means that uh, you just focus on the sign of the NACD indicators. You can have a look at this. It says that if the NACD line, uh, this NACD indicator is positive, then you just buy it. Mm, it just, it just, it's like, it's very similar to the exponentially moving average. It means that the current price is, is, is going up, then you buy it. So, so uh, if you want to ask me to the performance, I will say that this strategy is useful at some time. But I want to tell that this, these indicators are very, very slow. Uh, you, can, you can Google that to what is mean the indicator is very slow that in, in a technical analysis. And when you look at the performance, it turns out that this strategy is the best among the three. But maybe you change to another data set, the whole thing will change as well. So that, that's the NACD indicators. And also you can see that in this strategy, it fails at the beginning while it succeeds at last. So sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. So this is technical analysis. And the second indicator I want to introduce is the Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands are developed by the Bollinger. And it's for generating oversold and overbought signals. So when you look at the technical analysis, that people will focus on what is the oversold and what is the overbought. The many indicators trying to, trying to figure out uh, the price is now is too high or too low, uh, too, too, too low. For example, 
uh, when the COVID-19 breaks out, then Trump sent many tweets. Then you can say that the stock prices go down sharply. Then people say, it's time to buy the stocks. Why? Because the, the stock is oversold. This is called oversold. Uh, so we focus on this Bollinger Band. It's very simple. Uh, the dashed line in the middle is the 20 days simple moving average, simple, sim simple moving average. Then those, uh, those another two lines, uh, simple moving average plus one standard deviation and plus two standard deviation. So how to use it? People find a phenomenon that prices has a tendency to bounce within the band's envelope touching one band, then moving up to other bands. But what about straight, uh, this means that when you go down to this, focus on this, uh, they will say that the stock is oversold, then probably will, the prices will go up because the prices now is too, too, too small, I think. And um, what about this? This may be, uh, maybe the price is too high. So this is called overbought overbought, then the prices will go down because people say the price is too high now. So what about the trading strategy? People find many zones. Mm, this, because we have five lines, so you have six zones. We focus on the four zones in the middle. Uh, for example, mm, this is called buy zone because the price is now is in a, in a very strong upper trend. So it's, it's in a buy zone. But what about in the in the in the middle? These two zones people call it neutral zone. Neutral zone is you, you cannot find any signals. It provides no information. The prices are just fluctuating in these zones, and maybe it will go up, maybe it will go down. The probability seems to be same. And this is the sell zone. So this is the sell zone because the the stocks is in a strong a strong trend to go down. Uh, so, but you may ask, what about this zone in the in the in the in the top and the zone in the bottom? This zone, we, we thought we we said that the stock prices have a trend to bounce within within the Bollinger band bands two lines. So this zone in the in the in the tops is is a kind of sell zone because the the stock price the stock is is overbought and in the middle uh, in the, in the bottom is a kind of buy zone but i want to say that this strategy sometimes fail uh, when you look at this the, this thing is it almost reach the what we call it is oversold because the prices go down sharply and in this case we we think that it's, it's not normal. So the stock prices will go up, will go up because it is kind of oversold, but everything can happen. And the stock prices go down continually. So sometimes this strategy will fail. This is the technical indicators. Uh, if you know the related strength and index, it, it, almost, it, it almost say the same thing. When the stock price is oversold, it's time to buy it. But maybe 60% of time that this strategy succeeds, while still you can find 40% of time that the, this strategy does not work. Uh, when the price is above the upper Bollinger lines, yeah, the tendency to retreat, we can have a look at this example, example data set. Uh, we want to trade with this data set. So uh, we can just have a look at its performance. Uh, in this data set, uh, it said that the performance is better. So we have tested many trading strategy and basically they are all better than the buying, buy and hold strategy. But uh, in, in this one, you can say in this period, in this period, this strategy is very successful, but in this period, this strategy fails. So who knows? Who knows what kind of strategy can be succeed all the time? I don't think so. So 
now uh, you have been aware of that every indicators can be a predictor can be a predictor uh, so if you want to trade that you will find that uh, you have maybe 100 technical indicators but every indicators give you different different answer how can you make your decision for example here the oscillators it suggests you to sell while the moving average those indicators they suggest you to buy so how can you combine those answers uh, now i want to say an oscillator is a technical analysis indicator that varies over time within a band within a band like a bollinger band is within the band while the moving average is not so how can you trade now i just uh, show you the list of technical indicators these indicators if you want to design the trading machine learning uh, regime that you can select these indicators those are very popular but you cannot just just use it sometimes you need to do some normalization because like simple moving average a uh, simple moving average is follow the trend of stock prices so you cannot just use it alone. You need some normalization or some transformation. So these things, there's no unified standards you need to try to figure out by yourself. Um, but for those, for those uh, oscillators, basically for those oscillators, uh, there's no need for normalization. So these are another difference. So. If now you have those indicators, you can train your models using every indicators as an input, as inputs to these machine learning models, whatever. This is neural network, you can use another models. For now, I want to say that the, the most popular one is the long short term memory, LSTM. That's the most popular one. You can try it, but, but still, I, there's no guarantee that the models can work. Because sometimes it's, it's about the feature engineering and feature selection. Uh, those things uh, in, in academics that people have no conclusion because it depends on data set and depends on stock, the behavior of the stock markets. And even though you know that the stock prices are affected by many, 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 many factors, like the financial news and sometimes the companies can can just lies based uh, lies on their financial reports those things like this happens all the time so technical indicators is just one way if you go to the financial markets i i believe that people will consider more and another thing is that since every indicators can give a give a prediction so what about just combining those combining those 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 their answers for example the s the simple moving average give you up or downs prediction and for every indicator they gave the prediction you just combine them combine them so the input is those binary binary input or uh, you can say the like, they can have three values positive neutral and negative so these kind of another kind of input then you use these input to train your model to get the output so so this is the introduction about those technical indicators so how people use it basically when you search the machine learning for stock prices prediction most of papers are using those technical indicators and another way of using machine learning models is to create a totally new indicators these are another topics because one indicators are just a function of the high low close prices and the volume so it's a kind of function approximator you know, you know machine learning models are function approximator so we can approximate a new function so this is another topic so i want I, I don't want to introduce it. Uh, there's, there's some possible references. Uh, second things, the fundamental analysis. 
Here, I just want to introduce the data. So what's the difference between fundamental analysis and the technical analysis? A technical analysis just focus on historical prices, while, while the fundamental analysis is from the company's financial report. Every quarter, the company needs to publish its financial report. Then based on their performance, then you trade. Uh, there are three big categories, the balance sheet income statement and cash, cash flow statement. So you can build machine learning models based on these fundamental indicators. It's very similar to technical indicators while, while the data frequency is much slower because it's from companies' financial reports. So every quarter you just have one data, every year you just have four data. So the data frequency is really slow. So what, what is balance sheet? Balance sheet is a statement of financial position of business, that lists the, the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity at the particular point of the time, usually at the end of a quarter. So what can, we, what, what can we use? For example, how many assets? How many liabilities? But still, these things are, use, are not so useful. But we can use those balance sheets to calculate some what we call financial ratios. You will see later. Those financial ratios are more useful. And this thing, maybe, maybe you are more familiar. This income statement, like, uh, like net income, operating income, uh, things like that. You can have the feelings that if a company's income is going up, going up and up, then the stock prices will go up. It's very natural. So this is fundamentals. And the cash flow, we want the cash flow to uh, as high as possible. It means that the company is, is healthy, is kind of healthy. So cash flow is net amount of cash and cash equivalent being transferred in and out of a business. For now, still we don't know how to train a machine learning model so we need to calculate financial ratios those financial ratios are created with the use of numerical values taken from the financial statements to gain meaningful information about the company usually uh, in machine learning that is better to use those financial ratios uh, these are two examples for example the Net profit margin. This is one financial resource. It's calculated by uh, the net income divided by the revenue. In general, the higher in a, the higher a company's profit margin, uh, the better. So these indicators tell you something. So uh, you can train your model using this indicator. And the second thing is the current ratio is calculated by the current asset divided by current liabilities. A higher current asset ratio is favorable. So uh, it's, it's, like, it's like, like technical analysis, but uh, we said that before, the technical analysis, every indicator can give you a suggestion whether to buy or sell. But here is kind of, it's, it's kind of feelings that it's good or not, but it's, it's far away from buy or sell. So, so this is another difficulty of using fundamental analysis. So you need some experts to work in on it every year that you will, so you will know its tricks. But for me, I just know something, but not too much. Companies are different, so there's no unified standard for evaluating whether a company is healthy or not. For one ratio, it's higher in this company while the company is, is very healthy, while it's, it's is more in another company, and another company is also healthy. So there's no unified standard. And another thing is that the frequency is very slow. Every year you just have four data. So the researcher suffers the, the insufficient of the data. And, and the, second, uh, the third thing, the sentiment analysis, uh, this thing, I think this thing is useful, but it's, it's really far away from statistics. It's more about text mining, the natural language processing, it's about this thing. 
is very computer science. In this field, uh, uh, the information the information can come from the financial news articles and companies' reports. And as per recommendation, and nowadays people use Twitter. Uh, you can train the text mining regime to analyze those Twitter sentiment, then give give your suggestion whether to buy or sell these stocks. And I think this, if you are interested, you can go to the library and there's a Bloomberg machine. Bloomberg machine has a function called social sentiment analysis. We'll, if you stick to one stock symbol, then they will give you, uh, give you some report and you can see every day uh, to see the, the newspapers and things like this to analyze whether the stocks is, is worthy or not. So this is a screenshot of the Bloomberg machine. So now we may have a conclusion that's very simple. First of all, those, two, those three analyses are what we call agro-mix agro trading or agro-trading. These are defined as a buy-sell decision made solely by agro-mix agro models. That says you have indicators uh, using as an input of machine learning models, then give your prediction, then you trade. So but these are based on algorithms. No expert, no expert. So maybe in the future, with the development of artificial intelligence, that some company will use this strategy. So just, just use machine learning models to give you prediction, and you trade automatically. But now, but now, as the stock markets are very, very noisy, so it's really hard to hard. To trade based on machine learning models now. Uh, from what I heard that it depends on the frequency. If the frequency is, is higher, like high frequency trading, that, that the probability that using deep learning techniques will succeed will go up. While in daily data, like daily data, monthly data is more like analysis. You can use machine learning model to an, an, analyze which features more important and which feature is more useful is things like that. But when you apply it for trading, it's not very satisfactory. And the second thing, the fundamental analysis can help evaluate whether a company is healthy or not. That's why people use it. While still it's very far away from it, the requirement of machine learning models. As machine learning models also usually requires tons of data, while the fundamental analysis can just provide some, not too much. The sentiment analysis becoming more and more popular because the big data techniques and people can use, use some text mining techniques to analyze the Twitter and Facebooks and YouTube to analyze those people's sentiment. You have the tools now, while in the past, you don't, ha you don't even have the tools. While still, uh, you know that the natural language processing is not natural, still it has many shortcomings because the language is very difficult things when you win science. Uh, however, the text mining, text mining technique is still developing. Maybe some days, you can use it, but now uh, it's still in the under research. So that's it. I think thirteen minutes. Uh, if if you want to use this in your project, you can contact me. So that's my presentation. Thank you. Okay, Shiwen, thank you. Hey, one question. I I don't know if I did. Did you include any R code? or any code? No. Okay, so, well, I just wanted to mention that in R you have many packages that already have implemented these indicators. And in Python also, right? She, when you mentioned some package in Python. Oh, in Python, it's tablet. Can you spell it? 
Or can you write it here? Can you write it in? Uh, T-A-L-O-I-B. So in R, it's, let me write it. How can I write it? Annotate. Yeah, in R is the TTR package, right? In R is TTR and quant mod packages. And you are saying, and in Python, can you spell it again? Uh, T A L O I B. T L. Uh, I should type here. T A L O I B. T A technical analysis. L O I B means library. Taloib. Library. Talib. Uh, yeah, Talib. Okay. Maybe. Anyway, so the point is that. If you guys ever want to try these things, everything is already implemented. All these, uh, all these indicators, the only thing you need to do is just use them and play with them and practice and try. Now, I want to, man I want to make a comment here. Uh, this thing that Shiwen has explained, right, is very different from what we have seen about portfolio design. Think about it. The portfolio design First of all, is for um, a big uni universe of stocks, right? And uh, you are doing some optimization, right? With, with so many different kinds of portfolios. And at the end, what you have is the position that you want to have on each of the assets, right? So how much money on this, how much money on that, on that, on that, right? And then, and that's it. And then uh, the next day you, you can re-optimize again or, or just use the, the, the one you optimized the previous day. And then you need to rebalance. You need to adjust because after the market prices have changed, your position has changed. So you need to rebalance again. So your dollar position, right? W is dollar position. Okay. I don't know if, if you ever thought about this, but once you have a dollar position, W, w if one day passes, the portfolio you have has changed already. Automatically, the dollar position has changed. So if you really want to have the W that you wanted to have yesterday, you need to rebalance. Anyway, my point is that with the, that approach, you have the position that you want on each asset. That's it. Now, this approach is different. First of all, I don't know if you noticed, but this is only for one stock. So this approach is stock by stock. So in, in principle, yeah, you don't take into account correlations between stocks and all that. So this is one by one. Um, and also, basically with these indicators, you determine what is called the signal. The signal is uh, a, a signal that is either zero or one, basically. It's like you're in or out. So it, right? Usually, usually the signal doesn't tell you how much you want to put. No, no, either out or in, right? So it's, it's very different. Think about it. It's very, very different, the, the philosophy of this and the philosophy of portfolio design. This technical analysis is what is done by the majority of the traders from, from home. People who don't have any statistical knowledge, right? They don't know what is a covariance matrix. You know the mu, the mu vector, that right? any factor model, nothing. So then uh, they can do this, right? They can do this because they, they just look at the at the plot and they can compute these indicators, which uh, right somebody has come up with, and that's it. And you start trying. Oh, this works. Okay, it works. Then you try and it doesn't work. You are oh, but it worked before. Now it doesn't work. So, you know, the typical thing, training and test, uh, you know, it's difficult to know when the power of a technique is going to be man maintained. Uh, so, so, you know, I know many of these traders, okay, and in fact, I know some of them and they are, some of them can be successful, by the way, but it's very difficult to be successful doing this. You need to be, you need to have a lot of discipline and really try, try, and, and discard whenever something stops working and that. You know, in the majority of the cases, when you hear people telling you, oh, yeah, yeah, I am doing this and I'm making money, 
you cannot rely on, on that because people only tell you when they make money. They don't tell you when they lose the money, right? This is a human nature. So if you believe everything you hear, then every, everybody's making money. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm the, I'm the only idiot who is not making money. But it's not true, it's not true, because there is human nature only to boast when, you are, when you have something good to say and otherwise you shut up. So, you know, but it's very interesting, very different philosophy. Anyway, so any, anybody has any question for Shiwen or for me on, on this topic? 